we set off on an interesting journey through the Polish-Ukrainian border, discovering the places in which you can smell the oil. They are connected with the activity of Ignatza Mukashevich, the creator of the oil industry in the area of former Galicia. This interesting tourist route leads through the places such as such as Yaswa, Krosno, Bubrka, Stanok, Ushuki Dolna, and Jeshuf on the Polish side, and through Sambor, Borislav, and Drohobych to Lviv on the Ukrainian side. In 1854, Ignatza Wukoshevich founded the first in the world oil mine in Bubrka and then a distillery and refinery in Ulushevica, Polanka, and Horkovka. He is mostly known as the inventor of the kerosene lamp, so it is time for you to learn more about the activity of this outstanding man. The trail in which you can smell the oil leads today through the places where in the old mines, which are still in use, we can find the oil equipment and museums with the expositions dedicated to the activity of Ignatza Wukashevich and the history of the oil industry. It turns out that running out of the deposits of crude oil, modernizing of the mining processes in the near future will lead to the fact that the tourist route of the oil trail will be the only visible trait of the birth of the oil industry on that land. The still existing historic oil facilities are enhanced by the charming landscape of the unique Carpathian nature. We start our journey in Yaswal, where in the years 1857 to 1865, Ignatza Wukashevich leased a pharmacy from the heirs of Josef Palach. The pharmacy was located by the northern frontage of the market square, on the ground floor of the tenement house at number 17. Obecnie na fasadzie budynku znajduje się tablica upamiętniająca pioniera przemysłu naftowego, a jednocześnie honorowego obywatela miasta Jasła. Zanim Łukasiewicz zamieszkał w Jaśle, to już wcześniej, w 1856 roku, w pobliskich Ulaszowicach założył pierwszą na świecie destylarnię ropy naftowej. Niestety, do dzisiejszych czasów nie zachowały się żadne dokumenty ani fotografie tego obiektu, który spłonął w 1859 roku. Jedynym świadectwem są obecnie pamiątkowa tablica i obelisk usytuowany przy ulicy Lwowskiej. W tymże samym 1859 roku zmarła jedyna córka Ignacego i Honoraty Łukasiewiczów, Marianna. The girl was buried in Jaswo Necropolis. The cemetery at Jelona Street was established in the spring of 1784 and is one of the oldest cemeteries in Poland. Oil traditions are still alive in Jaswo district to this day. In the past, a large crude oil mine operated in Haklova near Jaswo. Currently, there is a square in the center of the village where you can see the remains of the old mine. Following the footsteps of the creator of the oil industry, we go to Krosno. After their daughter's death, the Wukashevich family moved to Polanka near Krosno. They lived in the manner of a friend, Titus Szechewski. In this place, in 1854, Wukashevich and Szczewski founded a company which was aimed at exploring and extracting oil. A little bit later, Karol Klobasa Zrensky joined the company. The oldest in the world crude oil mine was established in Bubraka in 1854. Hey, Boże, Panie Dyrektorze! Nie przerywajcie sobie. Nie mam, to był prawdziwy cud. Mieliśmy zwijać interes i nagle trysnęła ropa. 
60 garców na godzinę. O ile to jest litrów? Jakieś 240. Jak pan widzi, kopanka dalej pracuje i wydobywa ropę. Te bąble tam w dole, to jest gaz. W najlepszym okresie to było jakieś 40 tysięcy litrów miesięcznie, więc nie tylko nie zbankrutowaliśmy, to jeszcze zarobiliśmy sporo pieniędzy. Today, the Museum of Oil and Gas Industry, Ignace Łukasiewicz, is there. In the beautiful scenery of the Bobzietski Forest, you can admire well-preserved excavations. These wells, despite the passage of time, are still working. And when you look inside them, you can see a disturbed mirror of oil. The museum was established in 1961, covers an area of approximately 20 hectares. In the open air museum you can also see historic buildings from the beginnings of the mine's activity. Among them there is a so-called house of Ignaza Łukasiewicz where a pharmacy exhibition and a collection of kerosene lamps are shown. There are also shows and radio plays devoted to the history of the mine. Materiał zaraz ktoś przyniesie, no to z Bogiem. Do widzenia, jeśli pani dyrektorze. Nearby, there is an obelisk founded in 1872 by Łukasiewicz himself. In the historic mines, smithy and a workshop, you can see the oldest mechanical devices that were used to repair drilling tools. The museum has a rich collection of unique devices related to the oil, refining and gas industries. We moved to Horkówka, where the Wufka-Szewicz family moved in 1865. Dom Łukasiewiczów stał się miejscem spotkań kulturalnych, towarzyskich. To tutaj spotykali się przedsiębiorcy naftowi. To tutaj schronienie znajdowali powstańcy styczniowi, którzy uciekając przed represjami carskimi chronili się właśnie na terenach Galicji. W samej miejscowości Chorkówka Ignacy Łukasiewicz założył jedną z najnowocześniejszych rafinerii, gdzie sam doglądał przeróbki ropy naftowej. Założył również szkołę jednoklasową oraz gminną kasę pożyczkową. Niestety do dzisiejszych czasów nie zachowały się żadne budynki związane z Ignacym Łukasiewiczem. I sam pionier przemysłu naftowego zmarł w 1882 roku. At the end of the 1970s, an obelisk commemorating the activity of the Ignacy Łukasiewicz was placed in the center of the village. In the neighboring village, called Zraunchin, you can see a historic St. Stanislaus the Bishop and Martyr Church. Its founders were Karol Klobasa Zrenski and Ignaca Łukasiewicz, as it is recalled by the two inscription epitaphs placed on the walls of the presbytery. It is also worth remembering that in the parish cemetery in Zraunchin, there is the Klobasa Chapel, and the grave of Ignaza and Honorata Łukasiewicz. The third shareholder, Titus Czechieski, was buried in the Jedlicze Cemetery. At the end of the 19th century, Jedlicze and the surrounding towns were owned by the Stawiarski family, well-known oil industrialists. At that time, a kerosene refinery was also launched there. The plant operates to this day. The Stawiarski Palace and the Stoyowski Manor in Yashtev also survived the turmoil of war. We are coming back to Krojno, a city with rich oil traditions. In the downtown, we come across the monument of Ignaca Łukasiewicz from 1932. Nearby, there is the building of the former Loan Society. Under the prominent eaves of the roof, there is a Scrafito frieze which depicts scenes related to oil mining and portraits of the three most outstanding Polish oilmen of the 19th century.
While in Krosno, it is worth visiting the Subcarpathian Museum, where you can find the most valuable collection of kerosene lamps in the world. The museum has over 2,000 exhibits related to oil lighting. The most impressive objects are living room lamps, which can be used as table, floor and hanging lamps. They are distinguished by a variety of shapes and decorations, as well as the high quality of the materials. These lamps were made in the years 1860 to 1950 by reputable manufacturers in Austria, Germany, France and the United States. At the exhibition, you can also see a copy of the prototype of a kerosene lamp designed by Ignaz Vukashevich, which was made by hand from sheet steel, soldered with brass. The Subcarpathian Museum in Krosno also has a unique collection of archives and artifacts related to the person of Ignaz Vukashevich. The most valuable are a commemorative book, which the founder of the Polish oil industry received, along with a commemorative medal on the 25th anniversary of the lighting of the first kerosene lamp and furniture from the manor house in Horkówka. We leave the downtown and head east to the still operating oil and natural gas mine in Kroschenko Nizhne. By keeping a safe distance, you can observe the work of pump jacks. The crude oil is pumped to the Letlicha refinery. From here, it is close to Val Glufka, where there are other shafts and mine equipment from the 19th and 20th centuries. An interesting memento of the oil rush are the graves of Keith Nelson, a crude oil prospector, and his companions. The health resort in Ivanich Zdoy was established on the basis of mineral waters accompanying local crude oil deposits. One of the patient's favorite places to relax is Bewotka, a source from which natural gas is extracted. The next point on our route is Zeszów. Rozpoczynając spacer śladami Łukasiewicza po Rzeszowie, nie sposób nie wspomnieć o Zadusznikach, miejscowości w powiecie mieleckim, gdzie Łukasiewicz się urodził i spędził pierwsze 8 lat życia. W 1830 roku wraz z rodzicami przeprowadził się do Rzeszowa. Tu także w latach 32-36 uczył się w rzeszowskim gimnazjum. W 1936 roku zmarł ojciec Ignacego, Józef, i został pochowany na Starym Cmentarzu w Rzeszowie. W 1840 roku, po pomyślnym zdaniu egzaminów, Łukasiewicz rozpoczął pracę jako pomocnik aptekarski w rzeszowskiej aptece Edwarda Hibla. Mieszkał w pobliżu w sąsiedniej kamienicy pod obecnym numerem 3 maja 22. At that time, he was strongly involved in independence activities. In 1846, Łukasiewicz was arrested under the charge of the illegal political activity directed against the Austrian partition and spent two years in prison in Lviv. Here is the Museum of Folk Architecture in Sanok, the largest ethnographic institution in Poland in terms of the number of collected objects. The open-air museum is divided into sectors with the buildings of Boykos, Lemkos, Pogozhans and Dolinians. The landscape of the Pogozha countryside is enriched by the oil sector, where a rich exhibition of oil facilities from the 19th and 20th centuries has been gathered. You can see, among others, a digger with a manual extractor for oil extraction a drilling tower, and a wooden Canadian-type pump treadmill. Lesko is a charming town called 
the gate to the Bierstader Mountains. In the second half of the 19th century, a refinery operated in the village established by the Dim Brothers Company. Była to największa rafineria w tym mieście i jedna z większych w całym regionie. Przerabiała ropę naftową w ilości 4,5 tysiąca ton rocznie. Rafineria istniała do II wojny światowej. W roku 1942 zaczęto demontować oraz wywozić sprzęt rafineryjny. Do dzisiaj nie zostały żadne ślady po e, tym zakładzie. Oil well started to be seen in the vicinity of Zegidolna very quickly. One of the first was the mine in Wodena. In 1896, the Fanto refinery was established in Zegidolna. The plant was closed in the 1960s. Na terenie Ustrzyckiej Gminy funkcjonują do tej pory szyby naftowe i kopalnie ropy naftowej, między innymi w Łodyni w Ropience. Możemy zobaczyć, jak funkcjonują kiwony, jak wydobywają tą ropę naftową, która oczywiście w tej chwili jest wywożona do innych miejscowości do przerobu. Natomiast jest szlak naftowy, jak to z ropą drzewi bywało, dzięki któremu możemy zobaczyć funkcjonowanie obecnych kopalni. The trail goes through Ziegi Dolna. Brezni Dolna and then Wodena, Leszlowate and Ropienka. In Brezni Dolna there is the mini museum of crude oil mining. We cross the Polish-Ukrainian border at the road and rail crossing in Kroszczenko. Following the oil trail, we head towards Stary Sambo. On the way, we pass Stara Sil with active crude oil extraction devices. We can find similar views in the vicinity of Stary Sambo and Sambo. На території сучасного Самбірського району в 19 столітті була справжня нафтова лихоманка, куди з'їжджалось дуже багато купців і людей, які хотіли на цьому розбагатіти. На даний час нафту у нас як такої немає, але залишилось тільки декілька старих родовищ, які ще використовують. In the town we can see lots of interesting monuments, a 14th century church, town hall and the university. Before us is Drohobych, another city with rich oil traditions. Strolling along the streets of Drohobych, you can admire the former palaces and tenements of oil industrialists who made large fortunes thanks to the oil mines in Borislav and Skitnitsia. At that time, the largest and most modern refinery in Europe was operating in Drohobych. Currently, the city has an oil vocational school and two oil refineries that produce gasoline, diesel oil and paraffin. At the end of the 19th century, Borislav became the most important oil centre in Galicia. In 1896, the local oil deposits were discovered by Władysław Dwugosz and Jan Jasz Branskowski. В тому керунку почали діяти в Бориславі велика кількість нафтових компаній, серед яких Standard Oil, брати Нобелі. Одною із причин перенесення рідничо-вертничої школи до Борислава був великий розвиток нафтової галузі в нашому керунку. Власне, 1800, 1908 року в Бориславі пробурили свердловину Oil City, яка давала понад 3000 тонн нафти. Але через день після її буріння в неї вдаряє блискавка і стається велика пожежа в тім керунку. Погасять її пожежники з цілої Європи впродовж 40 днів. І, власне, проблемою основного горіння був попутній газ. По загашенню цієї свердловини, власне, розуміють, що в Бориславі потрібно розвивати як не тільки нафтову сферу, та й її переробку. Це дозволяє в Дрогобичі після звести рафінерію для переробки нафти. 
To this day, the city has oil extraction facilities which are still working and places related to the history of the oil industry in this area. There is also the Museum of Yan Zhech. До нафтової історії Борислава причетні багато відомих постатей. Серед них Янзех. Відомо, що Янзех переїхав до Борислава з Львова, заснував у Бориславі аптеку і продовжував експериментувати з нафтою. Тут він помер, тут він похований, а на цьому місці створено аптеку музей Яна Зега. There are numerous health resorts in the vicinity of Borislav and Drohobych. The most popular are in Skidnitsia and Truskavets. In the 19th century, there was a large mine in Skidnitsia and a drilling equipment factory that exported its products, for example, to Hungary and Romania. We have reached Lviv, the last point on our route. Following the footsteps of Ignatza Wukashevich, we go to Kopernik Street. Once there was a pharmacy here owned by Pyotr Mikolash under the Gold Star. The future inventor and pioneer of the oil industry began working in it in August 1848. In the following years, in the laboratory of Mikolash, Ukashevich and Jan Zech conducted research on the distillation of crude oil. On July the 31st, 1853, the kerosene lamp constructed by Ignatza Wukashevich was used during the night operation at the Pierist Father's Hospital. This date is considered to be the symbolic beginning of the oil industry. Currently, in the former Pieris Hospital, there is a university hospital. From there, we go to Lviv Market Square to the Under the Black Eagle Museum of Pharmacy. In addition to numerous exhibits related to the history of pharmacy, you can also see one of the largest collections of kerosene lamps in Europe. The exhibition has over 500 artifacts. Among them is a copy of one of the first kerosene lamps. In the tenement window, there is a sculpture of Ignatz Wukashevich. Below, there is another one representing Jan Zech. Our journey is over. Let's remember the places connected with Ignatza Wukashevich and his activity we have seen today by visiting the Trail of Oil Traditions again.